So there are three things I want you to take away from this presentation today. The first one being, politicians aren't actually people. They're products. You don't know them. What you know is what you're told, and what you're told is generated by advertisers creating a brand. Number two, the question isn't, as a politician, who do you represent? The question is, who do you have to keep happy to get elected or re-elected? When you know number one and number two, that leads us to number three, which is about 250 people actually run your city. Every city for every person who lives in this room. Now, in 2012, I was elected to city council for the city of Tempe. So I know Tempe, so, so those are my examples I'm gonna use. In Tempe, there's about 160,000 residents and about 20,000 of those people vote. And you're not one of them, most likely. Maybe you vote for president, but what you'll notice is party doesn't show up on the ballot in a city election. So even though the average age in Tempe is 28 years old, the average voter in a city election is 62 years old. And I know why that is, because the material makes everyone look the same, right? Every candidate is in favor of neighborhoods and supports police and fire and, you know, puppies and kittens and all things good. And, and so it's impossible to differentiate. So what you end up with is a situation of Coke versus Pepsi, right? You're not differentiating, you're advertising, right? And advertising works. This is why you all drink bottled water, even though something better and cheaper comes out of your tap. And so as a candidate, as a candidate, what you're doing is you're trying to explain why you as Coke candidate are better than the other candidate as Pepsi candidate. Well, how do you do that? You do that with money. In the case of a city election, about $50,000. And where does that money come from? Well, it comes from about 250 people. And if you know that it comes from those 250 people, the question is now, who do you have to keep happy? Those 250 people. And then when you look at the decisions that cities make, it changes everything, right? It changes the paradigm of how things are done. And you might think to yourself, well, I help out in a campaign. I went door to door for Obama or Romney. But here the fact of it is, is there are companies that for money will do what you are doing for free, grassroots companies. So in this example, let's say you go door to door for 10 hours and you sweat it out in the heat, pushing Coke versus Pepsi. What you could have done, instead of sweating in the heat for all day, you could have just given 80 bucks. And then they would have paid someone to go sweat in the heat for you, and they're trained to do it. And they might even do it better than you, frankly. So, who gives money to these campaigns? Well, people who either directly or indirectly make money that says City of Tempe on it, right? They're police, fire, they have the bus contract, they have the city contract, they have the ambulance contract, and they all give the maximum amount you can give to a city election, $430. Land developers also give money. Let's give an example. Uh, on Monday, you give money to your favorite candidate. On Thursday, that candidate gets elected. The following Monday, that candidate votes for your building to have more height or less parking than it was required to by right, and you make more money than you were gonna make before. P.S., true story, P.S.S., there is no such thing as investigative reporting anymore. <laughs> Political. <laughs> Citizens United only makes this worse because instead of a person giving money, now a company gives money. So there's really no way to track it. So company A creates sub-company B that creates pack C that gives money to pack D that advertises. And if money is advertising and advertising is power, you are like the Fanta of, poly, of, of the system, right? You get no respect. And it's not just the PACs that give money, but it's the individuals. So not only does the firefighter PAC give money, but the firefighters give money because they're people, and like all people, they wanna make more money. And so now you can track where the money comes from, but not really, because the firefighter husband gives $430, but so does the, the firefighter's wife, who lists housewife, and the grandparents, and the kids, and the family dog, and the neighbor, and on and on and on. So ultimately, you don't really know where the money's coming from at all. This slide behind me is someone who I ran against in the last city election who nearly won. And you'll see a good portion of his money came from lobbyists and PACs and people that don't live in Tempe. Only 27% of his money came from Tempe, and I don't even know for sure if that's all Tempe money because it could be the firefighter's wife or something like that. And why does any of this matter in a city election? Well, because 95% of the interactions you have is with city government. When you drive on a road, when you go to a park, when you flush your toilet, unless you are uh, getting an abortion, uh, appointing a Supreme Court justice, uh, you know, or getting gay married, the federal government isn't really what you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So there are three things that I started with that I want to end with, and I want you to say them with me. The things to remember, number one, politicians aren't people, they're products. products. And number two, the question for a politician isn't who do you represent, but who do you have to keep happy? happy. And because of that, 
250 people run your city. Thank you.